in direct variation, our objective is to be able to analyze a relation to determine whether a direct variation exists, determine the constant of variation, and represent a direct variation algebraically and graphically. Let's begin by looking at this situation. Number one, Jose is making cupcakes for the French club. The number of cupcakes Jose can bake varies directly to the number of hours he spends baking. If he can bake 60 cupcakes in two hours, how many cupcakes can he bake in five hours? Well, to better understand this problem, we need to know what direct variation or varies directly means. So let's come back to situation number one after we've talked about a few of these things. Direct variation. Direct variation is the relationship of two variables such as x and y such that y equals kx. k is not zero. What that means is anything we multiply to one variable will give us the other variable. The equation is very much like y equals mx plus b, but notice the b is not there, or rather the b is zero. k is in the same position as the slope is, and that k is called the constant of variation. Constant of variation, also known as the constant of proportionality, is the number that relates the two variables. So keep in mind that k is a number. Being that it's like y equals mx plus b, it is also known as the slope of the line if we were to graph it. Now notice in this equation of y equals k times x, if I were to solve for k, I would divide both of these sides of the equation by x, such that I'm left with k equals y divided by x. So it's important to keep in mind that k, to find k, the constant of variation, we divide. So when we think of direct, let's think of divide. Divide to find the k for direct variation. Direct variation, divide to find the constant of proportionality. Let's take a couple, look at a couple examples. Example one, are the equations below direct variation? As soon as we see direct variation, let's write that we know it should be y equals kx. A number multiplied to x gives us y. In the first one, y equals 1 half times x. This is exactly that setup, y equals a number times x. So yes, this is direct variation. So the second part of the direction say, if so, identify the constant of variation, also known as, known as the constant of proportionality. That's the k, and the k is the number that's multiplied to the x. So in this one, k is a half. The constant of variation is 1 half. How about this? Does this look like y equals kx? Not at first, because I have subtraction. But I see that 0 is over here, which means that if I move the x to the other side by adding 5x, I end up with y equals 0 plus 5x is 5x. And yes, this is direct variation. Notice it's y equals a number multiplied to x. That number is the k. k is 5. The constant of variation is 5. What about this one? It also doesn't really look like y equals k times x because it looks like I'm dividing. But remember that x divided by 8 is the same as saying y equals 1 eighth x. So yes, this also is direct variation. This is y equals a number 
multiplied to x. That number is the constant of variation k. What about the next one? y equals 8 divided by x. Now this one's definitely not because it's not supposed to be a number divided by x. It's supposed to be a number multiplied to x. So this one, not direct variation. So no constant of variation. How about this one? Well, remember it's just supposed to be y equals a number times x, not anything after. So this added or subtracted. So this one is also not direct variation. Example two, which tables below represent direct variation? Again, as soon as I see direct variation, I'm going to write y equals k times x. Remember that to find the constant of variation, that means we will be dividing by x. y divided by x gives us the constant of variation. So if we're going to do y divided by x and get the same constant every time, let's do something to our table to help us remember that we do y divided by x for direct variation. Let's put a column for k over here and let's show that k is going to be y divided by x. 2 divided by 1, that makes 2. 4 divided by 2, that makes 2. 8 divided by 4, that makes 2. 18 divided by 9, that makes 2. Notice that every time I do this, I get 2 when I divide y by x. That does show that I have direct variation because I get the same number every time I do y divided by x. So this does show direct variation. The constant of variation that I'm supposed to identify is 2. And I'm supposed to write an equation. So my equation will be y equals k times x. If my k is 2, my equation is y equals 2x. How about the next one? If I'm doing direct, we'll put k over here and do y divided by x. 24 divided by 1 is 24. 12 divided by 2 is 6. And I'm going to stop there because I see I'm getting different numbers. These are not the same like these were the same. So this one is not direct variation. Maybe you try one more, pause the video, and come back and see how you did. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 18 divided by 6 is 3. So far, so good. But 20 divided by 7, that's not equal to 3. That's about 29 Anyway, it doesn't matter because it's not equal to 3. So not direct variation here. Example 3. Which graphs below represent direct variation? y equals kx is direct variation. We'll write that down first. This graph is going through the y inter the origin or the y-intercept of 0. Well, remember that y equals kx is like saying y equals mx plus 0, where the b is 0. So if it's going to represent direct variation, it has to have a y-intercept of 0 and be a line. So this is showing us a line with the y-intercept equal to 0. That's what we're looking for. I have that here, so this one is direct variation. Remember that the k is like the slope. So if I'm supposed to identify the constant of variation, 
That's like looking for the slope. If I pick another point, it looks like I'm going down to and over one. So the K or the slope is negative two. Negative two over one is correct, but negative two is the simpler answer. Finally, it says to write an equation. So that's the y equals kx. Once I know k is negative two, my equation is easy. y equals negative two x. Let's look at the next one. Where is the y intercept? Is it at zero? Nope, so not direct variation here. Here is a line where the y intercept is not at zero, so not direct variation. Remember, it's supposed to go through the origin. Does not, does not, this one does, so this one is direct variation. Let's find k, k is the slope. Find another point, looks like this one is up one over two. So k is one over two. And then our equation, y equals one half x. Number four, if y varies directly with x, so we see varies directly, and the first thing we should do is this variable equals k times this variable. y varies directly with x. The constant of variation is negative six, so this is k, k equals negative six write an equation that represents this relationship. So we just need to know what k is, and they gave it to us. So y equals negative six x. Number five, part A. If h varies directly with p, so normally we see varies directly, and we start with y equals kx. But if we're using h and p, just do those letters instead. H equals K times P. And just go in the order that they give you, H and then P, H and then P. H equals 12 when P equals four. What is the constant of variation? That's the K. We don't know what K is, they want us to find it. So H is 12, so in place of H, I will put 12 and in place of P, I will put four. So we have 12 equals K times four, and we're trying to solve for K. So divide each side by four. 12 divided by four is three, K equals three. Remember that dividing in direct variation gives us k. Direct divide to get k. Part b, if h varies directly with p and h equals 12 when p equals four, write an equation that relates h and p. So now we want the equation, not just what k is. So the equation is h equals k times p, but we need to know what k is. We found k right here. We could do that again if we needed to. k is the dividing of one number by the other number when they vary directly. So k is three, and our equation is h equals three times p. Number six, if A varies directly with B, so I see varies directly and I wanna write Y equals KX, but I have A and B, so we'll replace A equals KB. And A equals 15 when B equals negative three, find the value of A when B equals eight. So first thing we need to do is find K. A is 15 when B is negative three. Let's substitute these values. And remember we divide to get the constant, 
with direct variation. 15 divided by negative 3 makes negative 5. The constant of variation is negative 5. So a equals negative 5 times b. The constant of variation gets plugged back in. Now we're supposed to find a when b is 8. So a is negative 5, b is 8. Negative 5 times 8 makes negative 40. Find a, a is negative 40. That's how to use direct variation. Let's now revisit situation number one, since we've talked about direct variation. Jose is making cupcakes for the French club. The number of cupcakes Jose can bake varies directly to the number of hours he spends baking. So cupcakes varies directly with the hours. So I see very directly and I want to write y equals kx. Y will represent the cupcakes. Y equals the number of cupcakes. And X will be the number of hours. If he can bake 60 cupcakes, so if the number of cupcakes is Y, 60 is the Y in two hours, so X is two, how many cupcakes can he bake in five hours? So let's start by plugging in what we have, 60 cupcakes in two hours. So y is 60 when x is 2. Divide to get the constant, 60 divided by 2 makes 30. The constant is 30. So y equals 30x. It takes him one hour, will make 30 cupcakes. How many cupcakes can he bake in five hours? So five hours means x is five, and we can plug that in here. y equals 30 times five, so y equals 150. Jose can make 150 cupcakes in five hours. Take a minute to write a summary. Describe what it means for two variables to vary directly. See you in class.